Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the transition level. By the end of the video you will know what the transition level is, why it is so important, how can you calculate and then I'll share my experience with you after flying more than 10 years through transition levels. So without further ado let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot and understand the aviation world. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do, otherwise you will miss the next content. So let's start the today's topic, the transition level. What it is the transition level? By definition, the transition level is the point, the flight level, at which you should change your altimeter setting from the uh, standard 1013.25 hectopascal to the local QNH, okay? But why is this? Why we've got this procedure, why we, do we have actually the transition level and why we have to change from the 1013 to the QNH, okay? In order to understand the concept of the transition level, we need to talk a little bit about the transition altitude. I've made a separate video about the transition altitude where I explain what it is and why it is so important and I strongly recommend you to watch that and then come back here. I'm going to make a link in the description below so you can easily find it, okay? But however, let's talk about this, okay? Let's imagine you are taking off from a run. Okay, and when you're taking off from a runway, your altimeter should have the local QNH as a pressure reference. Why is that? Is because the terrain around you, okay, the top of the mountain that is around you or the top of the hill has got the air an elevation and that elevation is taken from the mean sea level. And since the QNH is the pressure that you've got at mean sea level, by setting the QNH in your altimeter, you're gonna use the same reference and that's what you want to do because if you take off and you fly close to that terrain and you're not using the same reference, so you're not basing your altitude from the mean sea level but you're basing your attitude from somewhere else, in that case you're gonna have some problems because maybe you look at the chart, you see the terrain is at 2,000 feet, you look at your altimeter, it's telling you you are 3,000 feet, you think you're safe, however, because you are using a different uh, reference, you might actually eat the terrain, okay? You might actually crash into the terrain. And that's the last thing you want to do. And that's why when you take off, you use the local QNH or the mean sea level as a reference, okay? So you know that you're going to fly altitude. By doing this, you actually will maintain a separation from the uh, traffic, from the other uh, uh, aircraft that are, are around that airport that uh, they are all using the same QNH, the local QNH, okay? And but also, you're going to get separated from the terrain that is in that area, okay? So once you take off and then you climb above the terrain, so that the terrain is no longer a factor, now you've got another problem because let's say you climb, you get to your cruise altitude of 30,000 feet, okay, and then you fly from Madrid to London, okay, what will happen is that you're gonna find, you're gonna meet another aircraft, other air traffic, other, other traffic around, okay, and now you have got another problem because what happened is that you took off with your local q and and if you keep your local q and you don't know which pressure reference are using the other aircraft, okay, because if an aircraft is flying from Madrid to London, let's say, and you use the q in Madrid, you take off, you keep your q and all the way down, in the middle of the cruise, for example, you will meet an aircraft that took off from London with the q and of London, you don't know what's the q and in London, so you are not sure that you're going to use the same pressure reference, and thus, if you don't know what pressure reference is using the other aircraft, the separation is not possible, because maybe that aircraft is reading 30,000 feet, you are reading 31,000 feet, so maybe you think you separated, but because you don't know which pressure reference these other aircraft are using, you might actually uh, fly very close to it, okay? So that's why it is extremely important that you take off, you use the, your local QNH in order to get separated from the uh, aircraft around you and the terrain. But once the terrain is no longer a factor, you need to change from the QNH to the standard pressure reference of 1013 hectopascal. Okay, so then what happens is that since the terrain is no longer a factor, you don't really care about the mean sea level anymore because you don't need it. Since the terrain is well below you, you change to the 1013.25, and that way you actually guarantee that you get the separation from the other aircrafts. Okay, but then, okay, fantastic. You take off, you climb, transition altitude, you change from the QNH to the 1013.25 
great, you get to your cruise and now you know that if everybody is actually doing this procedure, everybody is using the 1013.25 during cruise, for example. So you will know that the aircraft that is facing you is using the same pressure reference. Thus, if I read 30,000 feet and you read 30,000 feet, we know that we are at the same flight levels. In that case, one of the two has to climb, okay? But you know that we are using the same reference, okay? But now let, let me ask you something. What will happen when you're actually descending into your destination? When you descend into your destination, you need another procedure that actually allows you to change from the 1013, the standard pressure, the 1013.25 hectopascal, to the local QNH, because then you've got another problem. If when you are descending, you need the QNH, because you again, you need to be separated from the terrain and from the, uh, air, the aircraft that are flying around the airport, okay? And the place, the level, that you do this change from the standard 1013.25 to the local QNH is called transition level. Okay, so actually the transition level, make sure that you are using the same pressure reference that the top of the mountain has got, okay, the mean sea level and the other aircraft around. So it is extremely important to know your, your transition level and extremely important to know your transition altitude when you're climbing, okay? But who actually gives you the transition level? The air traffic controller will provide you with the transition level. So when you are descending, the air traffic controller will inform you that the transition level is flight level 900, for example. There is another way to get your transition level, it's by listening to the 80s where you've got the meteorological information and in there you're gonna have the transition level. However, the transition altitude, you find it in the charts because the transition altitude, since it's an altitude, you utilize the mean sea level as a reference so is, a, is a standard value, okay, it's a fixed value. However, the transition level is not a fixed value. Let me explain what I mean by that. Looking at the whiteboard here, okay, we've got this table. The table, depending on your transition altitude, so in this case it can be 3,000, 5,000, 6,000, 18,000 feet, okay, your transition altitude is fixed, okay, and I made a separate video, really watch that, you're gonna exactly know what you need to know about transition altitude. So depending on your transition altitude, let's say you've got a transition altitude of 6,000 feet, and depending on your local q and okay, depending on the q and you're gonna have a transition level. So for example, we've got a QNH between 996 and 1013, transition to 6,000 feet. That day, our transition level will be transition level, uh, flight level 65. Okay, so the, the air traffic controller actually used this table very quickly to know what is your transition level. But in order to make sure we fully understand the transition level, the pressure, and so on, let me draw what does it mean. Okay, so for example, we've got the mean sea level here. Okay, let's take this example here, QNH between 996 and 1013. So let's take it a even uh, a easy number. Okay, let's let's say that in today, uh, today's the QNH is 1000 hectopascal. So the pressure at the mean sea level is 1000 hectopascal. Okay, so and actually also we know that our transition altitude will be 6000 feet. So the, in here, we can draw the transition altitude, okay, which is 6,000. So the vertical separation, the vertical difference between our transition altitude, the mean sea level, is 6,000 feet, okay? But the transition level, since it's a level, is taken from the 1013. And as we know, the 1013, the higher, the, the, the lower the altitude, the higher the pressure. So in this case, the 1013 hectopascal will be below the 1000, okay? Because it's a higher pressure, so it has to be below, okay? So, but in order to calculate our transition level, we need to actually make some calculations because we cannot use uh, flight level 6-0 because what will happen is that if you take from here and you go up 6-0 you will end up here okay transition level 6-0 in this case and what will happen is that you really don't want to be below the transition altitude the transition level needs to be at the transition altitude or above because if you fly below the transition altitude what will happen is that you're gonna fly close to the terrain using the 1013.25 hectopascal thus uh, facing the problem that we said before, okay, that you're gonna actually not using the same uh, reference as the terrain and the other aircraft. So what we need to do, depending on the Q and H, we need to actually increase this difference all the way up to the transition altitude or above in order to make sure we are safe, okay? So let's do that then. 
what we need to do, we need to know the, what is this difference, okay? So if we take the 1000, the 1013, we can actually uh, calculate what is this difference in feet. Okay, so it's very easy because we need to understand that for every hectopascal in different in pressure difference, there are 27 feet in a pre, in feet difference. Okay, in vertical difference. So we can write down there in here one hectopascal equals 27 feet. Okay, so now we know that the difference in hectopascal here is 13 hectopascal. Okay, because 1013 minus 1000 is 13 hectopascal. If we multiply 13 by 27, we're gonna get actually a difference in feet of 351 feet. Okay, so what will happen is that this difference here, all the way up to the transition altitude, okay, so from the 1013 to the transition altitude, which is our gate to change from the 1013 to the QNH, is 6351 feet. Okay, or flight, le or flight level 63. Okay, but since we don't really use flight level 63, 62, 61, we only use 500 and in 500. Okay, so we use flight level 60 or flight level 65, flight level 70, and so on. What they did instead of using here flight level 63, they actually uh, run it up to the next one. So the next one is 65, the next available flight level. And that's how they actually calculate the transition level. So as you can see, depending on your current age, you might need to do some calculations, but don't worry. As a pilot, you get the transition level from the air traffic controllers. The air traffic controllers simply look at this chart and they, uh, at the table on the bottom here, and they will exactly know what is your transition level for that day. And you only have to do, once you arrive at that flight level, you change from the 1013 to the the local q and So if you want to make an exercise, okay, just go on Google and put the q and and then your local airport and try to figure out what will be the transition level for that day. But you need to know the transition altitude. So try to figure out what the transition altitude of the airport that is close to your house, okay? Make this calculation, try to figure out what will be the transition level, okay? If you have any question, leave in a comment below. Go back, watch again the video if there is something that is not very really clear. But again, if you have any question, leave a comment below and I will help you out. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, give it a like and consider subscribe to the channel. It's the transition level is a very uh, nice and important topic. So for me, it's important you get 100% of today's video, okay? So I wish you a great day and I'll see you on the next one.